landing, touchdown, and spin down. As NASA celebrating a Wright Brothers moment on Mars, video captures the Ingenuity helicopter's historic first flight on another planet. It shows the robotic aircraft lifting off for a brief flight at a height of about 10 feet before turning and landing in almost the same spot. Just amazing engineering. And here's what it looked like from the helicopter itself. Ingenuity's navigation camera sending back this black and white image of it hovering over the Martian surface taking a photo of its own shadow on Mars. Let's talk more about this amazing first flight with Michio Kaku, a theoretical physicist and professor of the City University of New York. He's also the best-selling author of The God Equation, The Quest for a Theory of Everything. Uh, you know, we can now say human beings have flown the first flight of a powered aircraft on another planet. Tell me the significance of this moment and, and what it opens up in terms of exploration on other planets. Well, you know, the Wright brothers back in 1903 sent a object heavier than air 12 seconds. For 12 seconds, it changed world history. It changed the way we view flight. It changed the way we have transportation, how we transport goods and services all around the planet Earth. Now, the ingenuity uh, flight was 30 seconds long and is equally significant. Because now we're talking about for the first time in history on another planet, we have powered flight. Imagine for the moment a fleet, a fleet of these drones one day scouring the surface of Mars. That boggles the imagination. Talk to me about how difficult it is for an aircraft like this to fly on Mars. I would imagine there, there's, there's not, not a lot of gravity to move through there. What, what can these flights do that the rovers cannot? How hard is it to get them in, in the air? Yes, it's an engineering marvel, given the fact that the atmospheric pressure of Mars is 1%, 1% that of the Earth. Therefore, the rotors, the rotors have to spin five times faster than a typical rotor on the planet Earth. But think of what you get for that. Um, the rovers cannot go to the polar ice caps, but that's where you may find evidence of frozen microbial life. Uh, rovers cannot go to areas which have rocky, uh, with, with canyons, with volcanoes, but but these drones can. So the drones can go where the rovers cannot. And that's a game changer. It's going to expand what we can do on the planet Mars by many fold. It's so exciting. You certainly applaud all of those engineers who've been working for so many years to make this happen and been so patient waiting to see those pictures. Uh, what, where would you like to see our space missions take flight next? Well, we have a helicopter on Mars, and one day we're going to have a submarine, a submarine on a moon of Jupiter called <laughs> Europa. That's right. There's an ocean. There's an ocean underneath the ice cover of the moon of Jupiter, and there's liquid water ocean there. And one day, we don't know when, one day NASA is going to put a submarine down there to see if there's maybe aquatic life on another ocean, on another celestial body. So I tell you, all these are game changers, helicopters and submarines. That could be the future. That's so exciting. All right, Professor Michio Kaku of the City University of New York. So nice to talk to you early this morning. Thank you, sir. Thank you.